Hey, this is Pastor Reddish. Listen, I'm super excited about this podcast. Hey, you know how I come to you raw. I come to you transparent. Hey, I come to you talking about relationship. And I just believe tonight we're going to have a fabulous time, a great time. We got some awesome, awesome, awesome questions. And I tell you the truth, some of the questions I don't even know about. So, hey, listen, y'all be with me. Hey, y'all walk with me. Hey, it's these questions that they gave me that what they won't answer to. I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to be raw. I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to tell you my experiences. I'm going to tell you what I think um, to the glory of God. I love y'all so much. Thank you for tuning in. Share with somebody. Tell somebody, hey, jump on with us. Subscribe to our channel. And I tell you, man, God going to truly bless like it's never before. Hey, what's some of the questions? I got my team here with me on the night. Hey, what's some of the questions that what we have on tonight? What's the first question y'all throwing at me tonight? The first question is, is arguing in public really bad? Sometimes I feel like it's best to just get it out right then instead of waiting until you get home. I think arguing in public around a bunch of people is terrible. That's bad. That's what I think. I think that you as a man, you as a woman, I think that if the kid's not with you, hey, wait till you get in the car and y'all talk it out or y'all do it there. Um, um, Cam have never argued with me in public, never got loud me in public. Um, if you do me like that, I'm going to walk away. I like, I don't even know you. I'm telling you, I'm going to put my flash shoes on. I ain't walking away. I'm running away. I just think that that's just very disrespectful, very immature. Um, on both sides, a man yelling or a woman yelling at a man. I think that is just terrible. I think that's terrible um, all the way across the board. Hey, if your kids are with you, wait till you get home and even talk about it. And don't go to your bedroom. I just think that and believe that your bedroom is sacred. So it should be a place of peace, hope, and joy. If y'all going to argue, go in the living room. Go, go outside away from the kids and talk it out. I think that it's very bad to you um, to say these words even in your relationship. I can't talk to you. I, I can't talk to you. Uh, I, 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 I think it's bad for you to shut down because you keep saying long enough, he waiting, she waiting. And so I think that whatever you got to say, I think that both of y'all should have said and you should talk and, and, and get it all out so that you can move forward. Because if you don't, the next argument, you're going to pick that argument back up, that disagreement back up. And I just think that you should never shut down in a relationship and tell him or her, you can't talk to them. I can't talk to you. That means you're giving lead way to the enemy. You're giving lead way to the devil. And why did you marry him or why did you marry her if you can't talk to them? That's deep. Glory to God. That's powerful right there. And so I believe and think that that's something that where you should never argue in public. In public. I think that you should do it behind closed doors. I don't care how much you got to get out and you shouldn't act funny when you're around somebody, around people. I just think that that's very immature. I think that if you out a bunch of people, your husband said something or your wife said something that was disrespectful or rude to you, I think that you should handle it or deal with it behind closed doors. Because remember, another he and another she is always watching. Always watching. Man, I know how to treat you. I know how to treat her. When really they, they know how to treat what they other head is thinking. They know how to treat what they other body parts are thinking um, to the glory of God. That was a great question. Give us some more. What you got for what you got for us on tonight? What else another good question you have for us? That was a good question. My spouse always has an excuse when it comes to sex. Is this normal in a marriage? I don't know what to do. Ooh. Hey, you walk in heaven now, as they would say, yeah, 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 you're walking heaven. Yeah, 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 you're walking, walking heaven. I would say this right here. Stop making excuses. Talk about it. If you can't talk about it, go get counseling. Put him or her in the car, drive in the car, find us somewhere to a counseling session. And don't go to somewhere you know they're going to be on your side. I think making excuses leads to other things. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter number seven, he talks about your body not his, my body is not mine, it belongs to your wife. I think that you got to start working on things, you got to start doing things, and nobody don't like for nobody to be cheated on. I don't think that is right, but guess what? People do things when they get in their emotions and get in their feelings. Some people are strong enough not to do anything some people ain't on that level yet to where they will, where they will not do something. 
they'll probably only take your butt for so long, if that makes sense. Um, one of the things that I would say to um, man, God designed it. He designed, he designed sex and some people need it. Some people, that's all they require, their relationship. Some people love it, you know, to the glory of God. And so I just believe that that's something that what y'all need to talk about. That's something that what y'all need to discuss. Y'all need to look at scriptures together. And, and, and I'll talk to men and women because somebody in that relationship, sex drive, may be higher than the other. And some people may live and thrive off sex. Um, and, and so I just believe that that's something that where it need to be discussed, it need to be talked about. If it's me, man, that's all I require. I can get it every day. Look at here, glory to God. And so that's something that whereas uh, you, you, you got to get some counsel, you got to get some help because you don't want to keep making excuses. And this is just what I think. Are you making that many excuses? And I, I just think that it's somebody else in the picture, you know, because when you start talking to opposite sex, glory to God, ah, uh, the same sex. I mean, I don't know, you know, you, you, it, it just things like that. Something is in the place. Something is distraction. And, and you can, you, you a man and you talking to another woman in your relationship, you know, uh, you a woman and you talking to another man, you know, uh, stuff, I mean, stuff start happening, y'all. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care if y'all are talking three, four times a month, but y'all talking 30, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, two hours. It, it, it's, it's, it just can't all be work related. To, it just can't be all stuff that what y'all thinking. I, I'm, I, you, you talking stuff come out, giggle, laugh. It's very dangerous if both of y'all married. I don't, I'm talking from experience. It's very dangerous. It's excuses come. I mean. It's, there, there's a lot to talk about in that right there when people are making excuses. Cheating may be involved in it because it, because you haven't been giving it, you ain't been doing it, making an excuses, you might, you, you, you might be doing something else and you might not be cheating physically. You might be cheating with conversations with another married man or another man, period. And, and y'all talking and y'all doing these things and you might be um, cheating with another woman emotionally, talking and, and doing those things like that. Something is going on in that relationship. You keep making excuses. Something is going wrong because at the, at later on, if you're not strong enough, the person, you know, who not making excuses may start, you know, doing some other things, you know. And so we got to get to the bottom line. You got to get some help. You got to get talked to. You got to do something. That they, they might be talking to people and 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 being sneaky and slick and swear they ain't being sneaking and, and be quick to tell about some ask God, I'm praying, all the above. Come on, man. It is it's just something that's going on. And if you're making excuses, especially if you used to be having sex, now all of a sudden you're not having sex. It's a lot going on. And and you you're talking to somebody else, you're speaking to somebody else, social media got your time. You're doing something um that 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 whereas you're not doing then I give the benefit of doubt. Maybe they're not having sex because they don't feel good about their body. Um, uh, they may not feel happy about their body, body. But if your husband is still tracking you, running after you, if your wife is still tracking you, running after you, won't you? Man, the excuses got to get to a place and you got to do some, some soul searching behind closed doors so that you can get yourself together uh, so that those things can stop. But um, and after a while, excuse me, it's cheating somewhere in there. It don't got to be sexual, physical, and all that. But you, you talking to another man, or if you want, you talking to another woman, or, or you talking to somebody, and somebody is grasping them little time, uh, grasping your time, and, and whether it's social media, whether it's friends, or something is happening uh, along the line. And, um, and that's that's what I think about it, man. When it comes to you know making excuses and stuff like that, man. After a while, man. It, it, Man, the, the devil is crafty, and, and that's what cheating and different things come into place. And, and, and I, I'm going to say this because I love how uh, Darius Daniel said, Pastor Darius Daniel, man, go watch his um, um, thing he had on YouTube, man, one of his services with married couples, man. He said these things right here. He said cheating is bad. He said, but if a person going to cheat, let them cheat for being greedy and not needed. In other words, if they're cheating on you, it's because... You taking you taking care of their needs, but they just being greedy, and so it's so many things that where you have to as an individual, you got to get some counseling and some help if you making excuses and 
and that's going to make that man feel or make that woman feel like you don't want them. And that's dangerous in a relationship right there. That's a good question. That was a good question. I hope I did a good job on that. What's another one, T? Throw me one out there. What do I do when my spouse doesn't know what she wants in the bedroom? I want to please her, but I'm lost on what to do to help her. If she don't know what, that, that's a good question. Glory to God. I Man, that is a freaking good question. Man, glory, that's a question I, I ask <laughs> uh, if I was inside of a marriage conference. That's a good question because some uh, women, they don't know what they want. And um, and I, I, I believe that after praying and fasting and asking God, then I think that you should go see a sexuology. She may need to get in tune with her body. She may need to touch herself, get in tune with her body, love herself. She may need to open up. There may be something that's going on in her life. Uh, she maybe was raped. She maybe was molested. You know, she, she maybe don't know what sex is. Maybe... Um, she was just having sex coming up. Still, she was having sex. And, and, and I don't make excuses for saying people can't tell me um, as an individual, oh, I was just having sex because my friend was having sex. You can't tell me that. Oh, I was just doing it and going with the flow because I started having sex and that's what I was doing. You just can't tell me that because, uh, I, I, I mean, some people just lay down and have sex. But but if you having sex with, with married men, married women, you having sex with just people, period. Man, I, I'm not, I don't give dev, the devil credit. You know what you was doing. And, and, and I just believe in a situation like that is that it, it, it's going to need some prayer. You're going to have to get some counseling. You're going to have to get some prayer because if she don't know what she want in bed and, and she don't know what she want to do, it, help got to get involved somewhere. And you got to be not afraid to say, listen, and talk to her. She don't want to talk about it. She flip it out. And all these things like that, man, you got to go get some help. If you're a Christian, go find a counselor. Go find somebody where you can get help. Check yourself out first. And um, after you check yourself out, then you need to tell her, hey, listen, we need some counseling. We need some help. We we need this. We need that. And if nobody don't want to go to counseling and different things like that, I, I'm going to say this right here. And I know nobody don't want to say this, but I'm going to say this right here. And I might be all the way wrong. But I'd rather a person be married and happy than to be married and miserable. Something got to happen. Something got to take place in there. Something. I did something. And, and I know if, if you maybe have cheated on her and uh, uh, you have cheated on him, find out the first part. Why you cheated? I, I, man, look at me. I tell y'all, man, why you cheat? Conversation attention. Man, I, I, man, them, them my things, man. Man, text me, call me, lust after me. Tell me you want me. Tell me I look good. Tell me you're thinking about me. Tell me you love me. Tell me you miss me. Th those are priorities for me. I, I want you, I want to know that you want me. Glory to God. Because in my part, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything that, that what I possibly can. I told you my weakness may be my unbalanced timing, you know, stuff like that. But I would lay it out there. If every woman I'll ever be able to tell you the truth, man, I'll give you everything. <clears throat> I'll give you everything. I'll go broke for you. Listen, I'd go all out for you. But, man, for me, communication, man, and attention and conversation, that's big. And if y'all can't have that, man, y'all lost, man. Y'all lost. It's, it's lost. And and somewhere along the line, you're going to be miserable and, and you're going to cheat. Uh, you're going to do something. You're going to walk away. And so just think about that, man. I, I, get some prayer. Get some counseling. Man, get somebody who y'all think y'all can talk to. If you got parents that have been married for 30 years, 25 years, man, talk to them. Get something out there so that y'all can talk about it. Um, to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. I think that was a good question. Now, I, I did the best I could on that one right there. Yes, ma'am. Well, what else we got? What else, team? Y'all got some questions tonight. What else you got, Fug? Should I tell him the truth even when I know it will hurt him? I don't want to hurt him, but I want him to know the truth at the same time. Is it okay to keep some things to yourself? It all depends on what you're talking about. <clears throat> it all depends. If you think it's going to get out there, man, man, tell the truth. My life an open book. So I, I mean, look here, my life is an open book. Um, that's something that where, um, who that's something that where you got to talk about, you know, I mean, it, it, it those certain, it, it, it all depends on what you're trying to say. If you cheated, maybe, yeah, you probably want to tell them, you know, uh, but 
if you're not into him no more and, and y'all not married, move on. Uh, if y'all married, and I, I'd rather say this right here, and the, the, I, the women say it all the time, and I'm going to use y'all thing. You say you'd rather hear from the horse's mouth than to hear from anybody else. Um, I, I think that 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 you should, whatever, if, if it's major, I think that you should tell them. Um, if you it was out there and, and, and you used to talk to his best friend, but he don't know it, and y'all, man, let him know. I, I mean, whatever. I mean, I think some things that you should say, I think some things you should do, you know. I think some things you should get out there, you know, if y'all are already together and you done some things you know, don't try to wait and see if you're going to get caught or don't get caught. Um, I, I talk for me from experience. Um, I just said, man, you know, I, I, let me tell you how, how, how petty, but before petty, the word petty, how petty I, I was. I was the type of individual, I, I'll tell you what I did. I, I, that was just me. I tell you, not, not God, I just tell you because I felt like, dog, like, I want you to hurt because I'm hurt. And they say hurting people hurt people. Misery people love company. Misery, misery people love miserable people. They misery people love company. And so it's like, man, okay, maybe you, maybe that might change. You might not change, but man, look at here. I, I'm hurt, so I want you to feel that. How many emotional decisions have people have made in their life of not knowing, but they feel they assume? I'm talking from experience, man. Uh, I mean, you got all kind of much that she ain't tell you this, but you assuming, you thinking, but you feel like it. And that spirit, that dangerous assuming. That spirit of assuming is dangerous. You can assume something where everything you're assuming is so wrong, so crazy, not even what you're thinking. And then you making all these emotional decisions. Now they making all these emotional decisions, and it ain't nothing like what you thought it was, but you assumed that because you believe the story of what you created in your head. It's dangerous. If y'all together and you don't done something, man, just get it out. Say it. Just get it out, man. Boom, say it. Two things that happen. Either he or she going to leave you or y'all going to get over and keep it moving. One of the two. So um, that, that that's my take on that right there. Y'all ain't married. Y'all ain't married. And y'all ain't even together. And you get with him. Man, you got a new life, new chapter, new thing. And you come out and you get with them. And you make comments, get them. Your testimony say, hey, you know, I don't been with 48 people in my life. I can't tell y'all all of them. I did this, did that. Hey, I, I, I used to rob. I used to do this. I do that. that. That's another thing. You know, you 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 trying to let them know. But if you don't got together and you don't did some things, man, look at here. And and you man, let get it out. You know, some things, you know what I'm saying? I know one one guy said in Pro in, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, man, some things keep to yourself, man. Take it with you. You know, but I just believe if you married and y'all did some things, hey, you should spill that out, man. I, I, that's just what I think. That's what I think. My life an open book. I don't have no secrets. So that that's what my input on that, what I think about that. That's a good question. What's a, what's another one? My spouse feels like we shouldn't know the codes to each other's phone and that I should trust him. Is that a red flag? I hope this isn't a silly question. No, it's not a silly question. To me, it's a red flag. Point blank, period. If you don't know the codes, first, if you want to know the codes, do it. You know, if that's on the way, you don't have no trust issues with your husband, wife, man, just if, if y'all got to do, hey, this is my password to my phone, do it. Um, I can say for me that I can leave my phone down. Now, I could always leave my phone down. The only, the biggest fear that I ever had with my phone was I don't know what was going to come through that thing and because I was just so freely for 10 years and 10 months, I was so free. I didn't know what would come through that. I would get text messages and say, oh, I thought I was texting my husband. Or, oh, I thought I was texting my 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 my, my girl or whoever, whatever, and, and, and stuff like that. But for me, it's just one of those things, man. Uh, now my life, and now my life, man, and man, this, this man, look at here, man. Unless it's pictures of, of my wife and them, man, I'll shoot, man. And get your vault, V-A-U-L-T on your phone. Get your vault build on your phone, man. You get vault on your phone, download the app, pay for it. You keep all your naked pictures and nobody can go on your vault, you know. If you got pictures of your spouse or whatever, however. But I think that if you can't have your codes, they don't know your password, they don't give all that, man. It's something tricky in the wrong relationship. She don't trust you, he don't trust you. Y'all got a fake marriage. Y'all fake. 
Y'all relationship fake. You hiding everything. It didn't matter. Something fake about that. Some some stank in that situation. Man, you need to figure that out. You know, that's just something that what I just think that where, man, if you just got to get the face or code or whatever, however, it's in there. If you don't know codes to your, you got all these Snapchats and all this. Like for me on social media, I don't know none of my password to my social media. I, I I gave them all out to 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 people in my church, well, my, a couple of people on my team, and to Cam, and I just that just because I don't I don't care for it. I don't, it, it ain't no bigger than me, you know. So that's that's just me. I think that everybody, if you married to somebody, I think that should be something that where that person can feel secure. You know, that's just what I think. That's what I think. So yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. I, that's 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 the best I can do on that one, man. Them, them red flags, you know. Before y'all get together and y'all conjuring up to be that to that place, and first of all, woman, when he put a ring on your first finger, tell him when you forget. When you put a ring on my finger, give me a date. If he can't give you a date, baby, don't even take that ring. Will you marry me? No. What what's the date? And when you had that date, had that date set in stone. That's important to me. So that's just what I think about that. But yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that's a good question. Yes, ma'am. What are your thoughts on friends outside of marriage? This is what I think about friends outside of marriage. I think that if you and your wife and your husband has a great relationship, a great relationship, I think that I've been being around some awesome women of God, some awesome women of God. They just don't play like that. They don't play with opposite sex. And if they do, they'll talk to them in front of their husband. I don't be around some men. I got some men in my life right now, in my life, in my life, in my life, that they, they, they like that. They like that. They just, they tell their wife and they tell their husband everything. I love those guys. I love them. They changed my life. I had some guys prior to... Of course, my pastor, of course, man, my biological father, man, um, 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 one guy in particular, um, um, Robert, uh, one guy, um, Pastor Robert, man, um, um, man, they, they just like that, man. I don't met a lot. I know a lot of great guys that, that they, they don't do so. Like, like for me, now in my life, um, if I'm going to talk to a woman, I got to have um, Cam, there are, it has to be another woman, a, a few people present that who I trust, of course, that'll know that they'll keep things confidentiality, but you you won't ever see me as an individual counseling a woman by myself. And man, my phone line, so can I talk to the same people every week in my life. <laughs> I talk to my team every week and that's about it. You know, I don't, I don't, I mean, everybody different. So that's, that's how it is. Everybody different. But I, I, I just don't think that it's a great idea for a man to be talking to a woman for two, three, four, five hours and talking to, if, we, if I can't talk to you in front of Cam, I don't need to be talking to you. If I can't talk to, I don't know how much you want me to say. You know, I, I, I guess for me, I don't believe in the, that's my best friend and she a girl. I, that's my best friend, and we're a guy. We for we talk about getting married. Ah, ah, yeah, uh, best friends can be poked too. And you know, ah, yeah, I mean, ah, whew. so you know, I, 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 it just all those different things. You're a woman, and and you deal with a lot of guys, man. Let 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 him know you're a woman, a man that deal with a lot of women. I can talk from that part. You know, let them know. Hey, I talked to Sharita today. I talked to I talked to um, Hillary today. I talked to this and that, and y'all can keep track. And if y'all can keep stuff lined up, you know, hey, but everybody different. I I, I don't know if you can talk to a, a opposite set for just y'all just talking. And, hey, girl, how you doing? Is that 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 some slick gonna come about? Some he may say something like, "Girl, you you killing that jaw, but your jaws look good." And I I just don't know. I, I mean, men, we something else. Women, something else, you know. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's that's a good question, right? There. That's what I just man. It, it's you just got to use wisdom on stuff like that. The men in my life now, who I know in my life now, they teaching me a lot of things and and having a lot of accountability um, in my life. So, I, that's what I think about that. Right, there. that's an awesome question. It's so many ways I want to go at that, but I'm trying to. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. 
in the name of Jesus. What, what else do we have? I want, I want to have kids with my wife one day, but I'm honestly terrified. How do children change the marriage? Ooh, woo. This is what I think. I think that if your wife and that husband keep each other number one and they love each other more than they love the kids, your marriage should never miss a beat. Um, um, <laughs> children can change a relationship fast. That woman have that child, she's going to be connected to that child. And man, you got to understand that. She's going to be connected to that child. She's going to be solid with that child. She's going to love that child. She's going to be there for that child. But if your wife can do all of those things, but yet take care of you and keep you feeling number one, man, you got yourself a winner. And that's a tough thing to do. I know a lot of women, I have asked this question um, man, and, and, and I tell you, man, I've with some men and, and they wives right there, glory to God. And man, I tell you, I want to say so many of their names and, and, um, and, and they, and they just said to me that they, they said to me and they hugged and said it was tough, you know, and I'll have, uh, 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 like half a half someone said, man, that woman said, I know who my king is. You know, she said, that's my king. She said, if I lose this child, I, I can get another one because he carries seed. It just looks stuff like that. And I had some that was, was, was very terrified, was tough, you know, that where they forgot who he was. And and I don't see, I, I haven't had that experience. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they forgot who he was and, and they, they over there with, with, with Betty and, and, and Boquisha and, Big Sheila and I, I, I don't have some of what women, what men, you know, forgot they who they was and and it, it's some things that took place and happened. But I believe that in a relationship, woman keep that man number one, keep winning him. I know you love those kids, I know those your baby, but keep winning him. You know, if you think that you can't keep him first and man, you can't keep her first because when she have kids, her body change. It don't look the same no more. You know, she'll body go through different things in her life and their body go through different situations. And so you got to make her feel secure. You got to tell her, oh, you look good. Oh, girl, you still got it. And you can't just say that just to say it, but you got to have that same drive, that same tenacity, that same everything that before she had a child, like you want, want to rip her up, tear her into pieces. And woman, you can't shut down. You can't shut down as well. So, I mean, God is just good all by itself. And there's so many different areas that where y'all can go at in that situation. And there's so many areas that you can go at in, 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 in all of that, you know. But make sure you keep each other first. Don't lose each other after the kids. It's easy to, to go into other areas. Women, um, man, you got to be patient with that woman. Um, that woman, I want you to hear me well, man. This, this I, re I really want you to hear me. Man, that woman got to find herself again because after she don't had kids, after she don't had that child, man, she got to come back to herself. And so it's going to take time and you got to be patient um, with her on that. Um, um, even even with, man, she, she all thing she's thinking about is that baby, that baby, that baby, that baby. Oh my God, my child, my baby, my child. And, and it's just things like that, that where well, you got to think about as well to the glory of God. And some women just bounce back. I got... A couple of guys I know, man, wife had a baby, and, and, and man, eight weeks go by. Man, look here, before eight weeks in the six-week mark, they trying to get some, you know? So it's those things like that that well, I think that everybody's different. But but just, just man, do some praying and make sure that, man, both of y'all are going to love each other and make sure, woman, that he's still going to be that king because you don't want other doors and other situations and different things to open up. Um, in that relationship and you want to make sure that y'all on the same page so that was a good question i like that question that was a good question right there what else we have i mean what else we have what one more question one more question what what else we have one more question how do you balance life when the baby is born but daddy has to work who i can talk about myself on that one that one is a good question for me for me is 
I go to school in the in the daytime. I, I work daytime. I mean, I go to school. I go to school full time. Full time student. Um, uh, wife has a full time job. Um, for me, I said in my sermon on Sunday that I I will leave leave the leave school to come and see my kids, laugh with my kids, play with my kids, talk to my kids because I know at night time. Either I'm gonna get home late, um, Destiny will be sleep, Zoe will be up, Zoe will make me feel like Zoe will make me feel like the best father in the world. She give me this big old run and daddy home, daddy home, daddy, and she run a hundred miles, she jumps and I kiss about a hundred times and and Destiny may be sleep. And so for me, what how I had to balance myself out was is that I started going home during any little break that I have, I sit there and and play with my kids, talk to my kids, because at night is when I work. I, I can't. I don't have a daytime job, so I, I, I don't see um, my whole family. Um, best days for my school work, different things like that. It's, it's crazy. It's like Sundays after church. You know, um, I'm always working, I'm trying my best to make financial funds. Um, so that I can make sure that anything my girls ask me, I can do. Um, one of the biggest things that well, I believe that you got to have, you got to have balance. And um, that's one of my biggest issues uh, for is my relationship is balance. You know, when I'm home, um, I mean, I can do things, you know, I can wash the baby, wash their hair. Um, I enjoy doing those things. Um, but because of my job, it's kind of like hard. And then I work on weekends. It's just like, it's crazy. I'm always trying to um, be in survival mode because I don't know about you, but I, I, I didn't have a lot of money. Don't don't have a lot of money. Pay my bills and, and get everything that what uh, my girls need, you know, and, and it, it's tough. That that's a, that's a great question. And sometimes you do got to make sacrifices. You know, I remember one time in my life, this, this um, last summer, um, last summer, I was used to making um, um, almost maybe seventeen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars, and I said, "Man, I, I want to focus on God. I want to focus on my church." And I went to start only making seven hundred and something dollars a week, and I, 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 I mean, man, I was robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I was building and establishing the church. I was putting my work and time in the church, and and and, and God started blessing. He started opening up doors. Um, that that's 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 so hard to talk about um, because it's because nobody getting the time that what they desire you know um, I want time but I'm almost finished with school so that's gonna be a blessing but I'm right into my masters so it's like I'm in this place of trying to do better so I can have better but it, it's it's a tough balance for me and for some people man you got to have a wife that understands. You got to have a wife that will support what you doing. You got to have a husband that support what you do. You got to have a husband that understand what you're doing. One of the things I can say is still try to meet his needs and try to meet her needs. You know, try, try to meet those needs as well, even in that time. Because if you understand, like, I can see if he ain't doing, let me tell you my life. My life is school, work, and church. That's it. School, work, and church school working church outside of me you know my kids so something i do now is that i have devotion with my daughters i give them a scripture every day i pray for them every day i anoint their heads with oil every day and i pray for them my intercede. that's what's the start of my balance that what i start doing is that how can you minister to everybody but don't minister to your house and so those are things that where i was pushing and flowing and doing you know but those are those are that's my life some people you know, I, I believe that if you can see what he's doing, if you can see what she's doing, but if y'all meeting those needs with each other, I think that through prayer and fasting and seeking the face of God, God, uh, he'll begin to have y'all to meet those desires. I'm working hard now because I believe that God's going to turn my life around and I'll be able to flow in ministry full time. Um, I'll be able to do the work of God and, and man, my house will be happy. You know, and so it's just that balance you got to find. Um, it's one thing when you're wasting time and you don't have nothing to show for. 
But like for me with my thing, I can show you everything, my schedules, my work, I can show you everything what happens in my life. And I just think that that if you don't have nothing to show for it and you're not progressing or working towards it, I think that that's a problem. I think that maybe you might be doing something else. Uh, if you don't cheat it before, uh, if you don't did some other things before to hurt, I think that 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 it's a lot that can be played and going on in the mind of him and her. So those are things that were there um, that that I can talk from those places and from those experiences. And uh, and I just pray that that was a a blessing. But get a balance, y'all talk it out. But I I say this right here, and I'm gonna leave with this right here. Um, this couple blessed me about two weeks ago on how they talk to each other. They never let an hour go by without talking to each other because they got jobs like that. And so even if it's just a text, they'll send a text, say, hey, boo, I love you. And they race each other. They beat each other trying. Every hour they talking to each other until when they get home and get settled and get in the house. But they don't talk to, to each other throughout the day. Every hour they try to say something. I love you. I miss you. I'm thinking about you. You know, stuff like that. I think that is something very cool where they keep in contact. But he and she, they keep lusting at each other. They'll be at work, send each other pictures. They'll be at work and, and say something dirty and nice and sweet and communicate they 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 try to do this every time and if they got longer to communicate in that hour or so they just send a lot of things out so that his mind can stay on her and her mind can stay on her. i think that's a great two great nugget but i don't know how you can be in a relationship and you don't talk to your husband you don't talk to your wife i don't know how you can be in that me i'm petty i told y'all i'm gonna chase you i'm gonna go after you i'm gonna do all the above but if you can't text me call me do all that i give up i quit I quit fast, I give up fast because, not fast, I won't say it's fast, I give up fast in this, but like I say, like, I'm I'm texting y'all, calling, and, and I told Cam one time, I told her one time, I said, hey, I don't text you and I ain't calling you because I'm always texting you, I'm always calling you, and you'll never text me and call me, and, I, and they were just kind of like, huh, and I was just like, I ain't texting you, I ain't calling you because I always text you and call, and you never text me and call me, so I feel like you don't want me and I ain't nothing to you. And it's just like, man, just like, so I'm that guy, like, I will blow you up. I would do all the above, but I just like, and I understand don't overcome evil with good, you know, don't really, that's, that's just, man, like, I feel like I give so much to a relationship. That's me, how I feel like I do any and everything for that woman, that wife of my, I do any and everything for, her. that's just me, you know, I would go out my way, but. I do get petty sometimes. I do. It's not sometimes I get petty oftentimes. <laughs> if something is just like, oh, like, man, you a man of God, I know I get you, but that's me. <laughs> and so, uh, but but those are just things like that, that, that where a man balance, you got to balance yourself out and, uh, and, uh, and you got to communicate and you got to talk and uh, make sure that you're doing what you say you're doing. And I believe that everything will be all right. Amen. Hey, Amen. I love y'all so much. Listen, next week we're gonna go deeper and deeper. Man, those were some tough, tough questions. I ain't know about five of those questions. So they got me. They told me we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that, but I'm gonna get all y'all uh to the glory of God. But I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Hey, listen, I will see y'all next week, man. I'm telling you, it's gonna get better and better and sweeter and sweeter. Send your questions in, send them in, send them in. Send them in because I want to talk about it. I want to speak about it and I want to do my best. I love y'all so much. Hey, it's raw. It's transparent relationship talk with yours truly, Pastor Victor Reddish the second on his podcast. Let the past be the past and let God be God. I love y'all to like. God bless you.